Uh, so uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's good to be with you here again for um, uh, the discussion of the ACT uh, ABM. Um, we've been, uh, I think, um, on a quite substantial journey. And we've traveled far in our work to understand uh, how the ACT ABMs uh, work, um, uh, the basic uh, logic uh, behind them, the ways in which uh, they employ graph read writing, uh, combined with these control flow structures based around polynomial functors, uh, to to help uh, work through the process of evolving diagrams, and in that process. Um, provide uh, a method for um, largely declaratively characterizing an ABM uh, just to, again, situate us and make sure that the key points are, are reinforced in uh, people's uh, minds. Um, you know, we, we have a, a schema-based mechanism uh, that provides us a way of characterizing the data uh, almost as a database um, uh, or database schema associated with our model. Um, we uh, can elaborate that with some information that's epiphenomenal, that doesn't govern model evolution, but rather um, is used for, for reporting on it. And uh, we have some rules that specify um, in a declarative fashion uh, how we how we update the current state of the model to yield a new state. And these rules come uh, in the form of uh, these uh, these uh, double push out rewrite squares, at least that's been our focus thus far um, with these uh, rewrite rules. And uh, I thought I I had one to display here, but yes, it's, it's of this form here um, where we specify a pattern to be matched in the current state and a replacement uh, for that. Um, when we find this pattern in the current state, we replace it with this and we get an updated state. I is the elements that are that are invariant, that are retained in common between the pattern and uh, the, um, the replacement for that pattern. Anything in L and not in I is deleted. Anything in R and not in I is added. And uh, we perform this update uh, in a fashion that's declarative. We say, if you match this pattern, this is the, the replacement. We specify these two morphisms here. Um, and it takes care of computing uh, this update. Um, so these rewrite rules um, uh, of various sorts specify the L, the I, and the R associated with these rewrite rules. Um, but as we saw last time, um, uh, there's uh, some additional texture here. Um, at any one time, we typically have a focus, um, a sort of focus agent. Uh, and uh, we have an iteration through the uh, set of all, say, sheep within our model. For, for this uh, predator prey model, um, that gives us sort of iterates that finds these are homomorphisms in AC sets. Um, I know that if if you haven't been following along, that may be jarring, or if you're coming at this um, not having reviewed the previous sessions. But the AC sets are mappings from uh, uh, this schema to set, right, um, or fin set, that encode a particular instance, a particular state of this model, right? Um, 
and uh, AC sets uh, can be thought of as databases. Um, we've we've uh, hit on this topic many times, but this is a schema of our database. And an instance of the database um, is a mapping from the schema to set where each object maps to some set of primary keys and outgoing morphisms from a given object, source, source, and target are foreign keys um, as associated with uh, uh, with that that the table formed by that object. So they say for each value of the set mapped to by E, um, what's the value? Uh, what what V do we go to? Um, what element of V? Uh, do we go to? So it specifies a map from the E table uh, for, for this particular value of E. What value do we go to? Which of these primary keys in the V table do we go to? What, what value of V do we map to? So it's a mapping from elements of E to elements of V um, when, of course, E is mapped to fin set and V is mapped to fin set. This is a morphism between the mapping of this and mapping of that. In other words, it's a function from this set to that. I think you're you're familiar with those ideas, um, but just trying to reinforce them. Um, so these are all AC sets. These are all uh, these, in fact, they're, yeah, they're attributed C sets. So they're, uh, they're atchets. And this mapping is a homomorphism. It's It's a, so this is an AC set. This is an AC set. Our pattern is itself an AC set. And here, our item, the fact that we have kind of a, a generic sheep, that's, that forms a pattern that we find in the current state of the model. So really, that's what's going on here. It's successively, where is it? Um, it's successively going through ah okay somehow i've oh ah, I'm, I'm i'm just totally uh, uh totally up to lunch so it's going through and iterating the sheep essentially what it's doing is going through and listing each of these homomorph each of these homomorphisms from our generic sheep instance that's just a sheep a sheep uh, to be found, a sheep shape. And we're finding that sheep shape within the current state of the model. So it's iterating through, iterating through in the current state of the model, finding each of those. And then we perform for each of these sort of patterns, L, I, and R, we're matching for that sheep that we found, we're trying to find this pattern. So maybe this sheep is in a patch of grass um, that has grass or a, a, a patch of land where this grass is ready to eat in, for that patch of land. If that's the case, then the sheep will eat. Um, so we'll apply this sort of pattern. And there's lots of details there. There's positive application conditions and negative application conditions that govern under what rule under what conditions does this rule fire or not fire but the general idea is we're <clears throat> we're considering matches l for this sheep that for which we're through which we're iterating and we'll go through sheep by sheep sheep by sheep um trying to find these patterns and trying to evolve these sheep um, and, uh, that was the broad, uh, the broad picture. There were some additional components here. These, these control flow elements come in a couple types. Some have state, have, have some internal state to that item and, and they, um, they'll do things like loop through an index from one to N or, They'll flip a coin according to some random number generator and uh, choose what to do next. And then others, the blue. So these ones are kind of control flow and 
and often they have some bit of internal state. These ones, by contrast, are rewrite rules, the blue, um, and these are queries. So um, there's a bigger story there eventually. We'll, we'll talk about it in more detail with polynomial functors, but that's the, the broad outline. And uh, you may remember that since we're doing with schemas, we can um, apply data migration functors to re really nifty things, right? We can take all our rules that we declared for sheep that have a kind of wolf version, and we can just say, convert them all, you know, mutatis mutandis adapt it for the wolf version. And then we get corresponding wolf ones. There's going to be some sorts of rules like wolves eating sheep that don't have the flip. You know, sheep are not going to be eating wolves. Um, but but there's a broad set of rules, uh, a broad set of rules involving reproduction and movement, moving forward and turning left and turning right, which um, are more or less uh you know, have corresponding ones for the other side. And so you can use data migration there and you can use data migration in a really nifty way to kind of lift things that operate on the rules, on the, the basic rules of it, these, these rules for how the system evolves and lift them to this world where we also keep track of where things are in the screen. That's epiphenomenal information that doesn't govern the rules or doesn't govern the model's evolution, but needs to be kind of brought along as we apply these rules. We need to bring that information about where things along are uh, along with it. But we don't tangle it up with our basic logic uh, as we would do with um, traditional modeling platforms. So, so this is all a really nice, you know, sweet, uh, world and and we talked about how these AC set colims allow us to crisply declaratively specify conditions like these conditions where a sheep is at a location where there's grass to eat, right? Or where uh, a wolf is at a location, same location as a sheep. So they allow us to sort of specify these patterns to be found to find conditions that look like this. And we just state what the condition is it needs to meet. And that's our pattern to be matched uh, in the in, in this uh, state of the world for the given agent. Okay, and those A agents, those, excuse me, those those agents, which are kind of the current focus are are shown here. Okay, well, um, we've, uh, you know, made it through a lot of the core logic, large, you know, far enough, I think we could start to think about creating our own models. Um, and I'd like to do that soon, but I, I do want to hit on one or two things that are in this paper we have not talked about. One or two things that are, in fact, for, for one of them fe are featured in this example. And the main thing is this weaken one. So um, within the context of our uh, of our example, um, we have many broad components that fit into what I've been talking about. And they offer great advantages by allowing this declarative characterization, allowing modular testing, and lots of other things. Um, but there is this use of weaken here. And we want to understand the role that weaken plays. Let's go see where this is. This is for a case where we have sheep starvation. And through that data migration functor, um, mutatis mutandis, where we have wolf starvation. So let's go, let's go, let's go see this. Um, so here's for sheep, and we see we have this starve block, and a sad block it is. We know we have two outgoing arrows. We we've discussed how one of them is kind of for success, and one is for failure um, of the morphism. 
And you'll notice something here. You'll notice that these arrows are by and large labeled with the type of agent flowing along them. I mean, sheep in this case. But you'll notice that this success morphism out and this one out here or this this transition out these are mappings from ac sets to ac sets by applying rewrite rules right and and, and this kind of flow out here is not labeled with s nor is this and in fact that's important because we can't merge together in this framework to we can only merge together things which have the same type of object flowing on them like all these all these all these no problem as long as they're the same type sss sssss s here these two can only be merged if there's nothing or unit flowing on them so we need to understand that and it turns out wolf has the same mutatis Mutandus. It, it's the same, same adaptation. So let's go figure out what's going on. And 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 it, what's going on is the weaken operator together with what's uh, what's going on um, here with the fact that starvation, it's a stark fact, but agents agents die, right? Uh, okay, so Let's try to parse this out. Um, uh, so we we have a, a sheep starving rule. Um, and when we specify rule, uh, you may recall, we specify this morphism and this one. right? We specify these patterns. We specify the morphism here and the morphism there. This is normally a monomorphism. It's monic. This is kind of a sub piece of that. These are the parts of L that remain invariant, right? Uh, I, I, it's a mumble thing. I've seen this described as monic, but Chris Brown said it doesn't always have to be, which is interesting thing. Um, remember by specifying this and this, we it will compute the update to the state, right? Under this is kind of the current state. By matching this, it'll compute that. That's it's computing this double push out these are two push outs push out squares okay so let's see what's going on here um so we have this is the morphism so we have at the center an s this is a morphism from s to this pattern what does this pattern say does it, can anyone tell me what does this pattern say what say this pattern What does this pattern say? Uh, it looks like sheep energy is zero. Yeah. So this is sheep and its energy is zero. So we're trying to find a sheep where its energy is zero as L. That's why it's L. And this is the morphism um, uh, associated uh, from from this to this. It's all. What, what sort of morphism is this? Arrows in this diagram, what are they? What's their type of this? It's a what? Is it a morphism in the schema category or what? It's a what? It, it's a functor, right? Yeah. Well, it, yeah, it's an AC set homomorphism. It's a homomorphism between AC sets, which is um, is a natural transformation between these two functors. This oh, is an AC yeah. set. Yeah. This is an AC set. This is a structure preserving transformation from this AC set to that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it's finding this and this, or this is finding this and this, right? Um, okay. Um, but this is a monomorphism. So it kind of this is included in this, right? This is like a sub piece of this. Okay, fair enough. Um, so this sheep is this sheep here right um and then create g okay so this is this is um 
a little bit uh, of an interesting thing. So this create is uh, a morphism from one to G. And what sort of morphism? It's a AC set homomorphism. We're dealing with AC sets here. So we're going to have G here. And we're going to have a morphism here, which is kind of bringing G. Um, it's just from one to G. And one is an AC set. <laughs> it's an AC set. Um, uh, mumble. Uh, so um, here, this create is sorry um this create is a is something which is a is a morphism from the ac set one and i'd have to think exactly what ac set one means i i should know it but i i i um i'd have to think about exactly what it means okay where ah where did i did i delete my nice table did i yes i did um uh, but basically, uh, it's a it's something which picks out a a G, and a G you may remember is a generic grass. It's a kind of generic grass. It's a thing representing where is it? It's down. Uh, it's down here. G. It's a generic grass agent. It's just like a vertex. Okay. Um. We're going to come back to this, uh, this sort of AC set colon. Um, so it's a generic grass agent. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll just say, does anyone remember? So this generic sheep agent, this generic grass agent, um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to help you remember this generic sheep agent. What AC set is that? Does anyone remember? What AC set is that? It's some particular mapping from this. So this, think about the generic sheep agent. It's a particular mapping from this schema, right? This schema to spin set, right? It's, it's some database on the schema, right? The, the generic sheep agent. How many sheep are there going to be in the generic sheep agent? Do you want to say the generic agent representing a single sheep? How many sheep are there going to be? What set is this going to map to? Can you say? To what set will it map? Right? We're dealing with a fin set. Sorry. We're dealing with an AC set. It's a mapping from this schema to, to fin set. Okay. So sheep matches to you know, maps to some fin set. What fin set is it it's going to map to? Anyone? Okay, I see a message attached. Yeah, it's one. Good. But is that the only thing in that AC set encoding a generic sheep? We talked about this last time. But it ends up being more relevant, even it, it being at least as relevant this time. So the generic sheep agent, we say, match me a generic sheep. Maybe maybe it's it's this agent we're looping through when we loop through uh, when we loop through in our uh, uh, um. <laughs> when we loop through our um our thing here, this generic sheep, we're going through each of these S's is is a generic sheep, and we are finding it um in in um that generic sheep. Okay, I I've, I've got to uh okay the generic sheep. It's here. It's this one here, right? We're going through each generic sheep. We're finding homomorphisms into the underlying state one by one. We iterate through. 
That's what the query does. It iterates through. It finds these morphisms from the generic sheep agent, S, into this. And my question is, is this S a database that only has one for sheep in it and everything else is empty? So E maps to empty things, V maps to empty things, Wolf maps to empty things, um, you know, the empty set, E maps to empty set, V maps to empty set, she maps to one. That's my question. Is that the case? And I actually told you last time uh, the secret. I told you the secret of how the AC set colon works, how it figures out what the generic sheep is. Maybe I'll give you a hint. This was the brutal earlier way of declaring a generic sheep. Below, we manually construct a generic sheep. Here it is. Does that AC set, this is what we replace by instead doing this. This is the more the slicker. This is the more elegant. This is the more beautiful way of doing this. Does this only have, well, you tell me, how many sheep does this have? This generic sheep, how many sheep does it have? One, one. But is that all it has? What else does it have in it? Attributes. It has attributes. Okay, that's true. But what else does it have in terms of an object? What other object does, has a non-empty table? Just looking at this. What other object has a non-empty table? I'll remind you that the attributes... Oh, sorry. Uh, what other object has a non-empty table? Each of these is objects. So each maps to some table, some set, right? Some set. The, 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 tape, the table has a set of primary keys. So when I say table. So sheep maps to a set, which is of size one. Um, uh, okay, great. Sheep maps to a set of size one. Mm -mm, just what we wanted. E maps to a set of size zero by appearances. Um, ah, sorry. Uh, okay. Um, um, uh, there's, there's no E it seems. Um, and, uh, but what thing, what other object here has a non empty set to which it matches, to which it maps when we have the fin set, when it map from this to fin set an AC set is mapped from this to fin set. So each of these objects it turns into a set sheep turns into a set of size one. I tell you, E turns into a set of size zero. Wolf turns into a set of size zero. But there's one other object that does not turn into a set of size zero. It turns into a set of size one. And what is that object? Ross. Yeah, the V. The V. V turns into a set of size one. And you might say, well, wait a minute. Like, why am I specifying a generic sheep? And I need to specify, like, a vertex? Well, yeah, that sheep is associated with a vertex. So they kind of go together. For there to be a generic sheep, there needs to be a vertex. But do you remember? Do you remember how sort of the way of finding what a generic sheep is? The kind of, from, if I just tell you sheep, you can tell me a whole functor from that. You can give me a whole functor from this from this here schema, that schema, to finset. If I tell you sheep, you can give me back a a, a functor. It's the what functor for sheep. It's the what. It's at the very heart of the idea of a polynomial functor. Polynomial functors are sums of what? If I say sheep, yes, it's a representable. 
That's the beauty of representable functors. For a given schema, the, rep the representables can be specified. Just one word, just the name of the object, and you can give me back a whole functor, the representable functor. Y to that value, right? Y to the sheep. Mm -hmm. It's a mapping from sheep. It's a functor. It's the sheep representable. It's a thin set. Ah, it's an AC set for sheep. So if I give you sheep, you can give me back an AC set for sheep. Or you, you tell me an object, and I'll give you back an AC set for that object. So you tell me sheep, and I'm going to give you back. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you back this, 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 this AC set right there. That's an AC set. I'm going to give it back to you. You tell me E, I'm going to give you back an AC set. You tell me Wolf, I'll give you back an AC set. That is, you tell me Wolf, I'll give you back a mapping from this whole schema, from any object in the schema to a set, and any morphism to a map between, a function between those sets. That's what a representable is. One, you just tell me the object, I'll give it back to you. You tell me a morphism, I'm gonna, I'll give you a mapping between AC sets, which is cool. Okay, so what I'm telling you is this, for sheep, this is the representable functor. That's what represents a generic sheep, because sheep come along with a vertex. In order to specify kind of a sheep in a consistent way, you can't have this be empty. Why can't, why can't this be empty? Why, why would it not make sense for this to be empty? Let's think about if sheep were the single... Okay, suppose we have one sheep. So sh the object sheep maps to fin set. Sheep turns into a set of size one. Suppose V were a set of size zero. It mapped over to fin set, to an empty set. Why does that not make sense logically? What would be the problem with that? If this were a set of size one and that were a set of size zero, when they, in terms of how they mapped over their... their yeah, the, the morphism here, what is a, okay, so what would be mapping the morphism from here to here would map over. If you'd have a morphism in your schema category, you map it over into fin set to a morphism between the mapping of this, the set of sheep and the set of vertices. And what is a morphism in set or in fin set? A morphism is a what? It begins with F and ends with N. It has a T in the middle. Function, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but what would be bad if this were the empty set and this were the set of sheep of size one? What would be the bad thing? What would be very bad? <laughs> yeah, there's no functions into an empty set from a non-empty set. This is a non-empty set. This is an empty, if that were an empty set, it would be, there's no function like that. So this has got to have an element in it. It has to come along with it. And that's what representatives, representables do. They kind of give you the building blocks, the natural consistent building blocks. You can't just say one sheep, no, no vertices, please. No, you can't do that. It doesn't make sense. It's not logically consistent. So there has to be one sheep, one vertex here. That's what the two objects are. Here. Um, yeah, yeah. It's like in stock flow and rewriting a flow. We also need to include its dynamic variable. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the representatives representables are like these building blocks. They are the polynomial. They're the, they're the elements of the polynomial functors, right? They're, 
Why did the A? That's the representable, right? Yeah. Um, it's a, that's why we say poly is this uh, is the category defined by co-products of representable functors. Mm. This is really tied in. This is poly stuff. This is like poly, poly stuff. Okay. Um, so this AC set colim thing. So this was kind of the crude way of doing it. This was the, this is the, using the representables. It's computed the representables. And guess what? That's what it's doing here. It's computed the representables. That's, you, you do this, and then it can do this really quick. Okay, this is a representable for sheep. This is the re representable for grass. In other words, this represents grasshood. This represents sheephood, right? Mm. Okay, uh, now, now back down to this weekend thing. So here we have a, a thing where, where we basically go and we're going to have a a morphism into just grass, okay? Um, here, uh, we're going to replace it with just uh, a vertex. And then what's going to happen is um, we're going to we're going to need to. Um, Mm. Mm. Okay, so um, I should know what this I is here. I think this is basically um, taking the two things that are in parallel here, this, this thing and this one. And I think this I is basically... I should know what capital I is. If anyone else can find it, I'd be grateful. Um, but I think basically it is um, taking the fact that we are uh, mumble. Um, so that's that's the route where they uh, where they die, and and uh, this. This create s. So this weekend, I'll, I'll talk about weekend, and I'll try to, I'll try to sort of put this uh, back to make sense. So we're we're computing this thing here, and the weekend is involved in this. This is showing weekend here. Okay, and what weekend does is is pretty interesting. So weekend is going to, um, and this is where I think I need my my tablet here um because i think we're going to need um uh, a bit of of drawing so we're going to have a uh, weekend uh it's it's dominantly showing from a to b um where b and a are our home sets okay, i don't ah okay i don't know why this is showing up so differently now but somehow it's it's gotten into a uh, I, I don't know what i'm doing help 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 okay um okay let's let's go let's go make the best of it okay um So we're going to have weekend over here. Um, weekend. And you'll notice that weekend is uh, taking in an A and putting out a B. So this is an A and this is a B. And what this says is that um, F, the thing we give it to do its job, is a mapping, a homomorphism 
an AC set from B to A. So this is a this is an AC set here. Okay. And this is an AC set here. Okay. Um and we're giving it F, which is a homomorphism from B to A. Okay. And the effect of this, um, so we're going to have had focus A sub I into current state X sub I. And now after this, this uh, operation, we're going to focus B, a focus B into this. And an intuition is that B is like a sub piece of A normally. It can be like something we're zooming into. Okay. Um, so here's the thing um, these are AC sets. And if our schema category, maybe I'll do this in a nice different color for schema category. If we had, um, let's suppose we have uh, E and V here, just to help us think this through. So you might say that like an edge, like just like a, a sheep needs grass to be consistent, an edge needs two vertices to be consistent, right? So if we think about a graph, uh, and even if it's the simplest thing, in order for an edge to exist, it needs two vertices. The natural building blocks, you can't have an edge in some disconnected ghostly sense. It it needs two, two vertices to kind of be, you know, a full thing. This is the natural building blocks. This is the representable for edges have two vertices. Okay. Um, now, so this is our schema category, let's say, um, for our AC set. And of course, a given um, a given AC set will be mapping these over into some set of edges and some, so here's fin set, and uh, there'll be, you know, some set of edges here. Uh, maybe it's, you know, uh, one edge and and vertices maybe will go to, um, you know, zero and one or something like that. Um, and uh, here um, we'll be mapping over uh, from, so we're going to have one edge, we're going to have two vertices, the source of the edge. Um, uh might might go from uh so this source might have right um uh so it if we specified source it might map this maps it to uh to call this zero here uh zero and this one so this maps it to zero right um edge this edge we'll call this edge star um it maps it to zero and maybe i'll color these some better color yeah how's that um let's color this how's that um there and we'll color this one like that color okay and so uh dust oh target it's not dust target And, and we'll go to one. Okay. Okay. So, so there we go. All right. Um, right. Okay. So here's the deal. If we have a right. So, um, is is this worth emphasizing? Maybe, but we'll, we'll if so, we'll get to it in a bit. Okay, so E, we might say E as subparts of V. Um, like uh 
an edge has has these uh, subparts um, that are these vertices. Now, if we consider, yeah, okay. So, what's the representable for an edge here? The representable for an edge is going to be something like um, uh, uh, e to the fin set. So, so or put it, it's going to be palm from in in a C set um, from E to whatever we plug in. So this is going to be a functor. It's going to map E to this. It's going to map V. So so this functor, okay, um, uh, this functor is going to be a functor that is going to be of this form. It's a functor from this schema to finset. What is this functor going to be? It's going to it's going to map from this to this, just like that. Okay, good. Source target, and it's going to map it over to finset, just like this. Yeah. Okay. Happy. Happy. Um. And and we're going to have some set here mapped to by E. We're going to have some set here um, mapped to by V. And we're going to have um, a function mapped to by, by set and, and by target. Okay, so let's fill, fill this in. So this is going to be, I'm illustrating here this HOM functor, this representable. This is going to be called uh, representable. Here we go. Representable for E. Can anyone tell me the representable for E, what is this going to be? Um, what's going to, E is going to map over here to what? What what sort of the elements of this set, the natural elements of this set? Well, if we plug in E here, what is HOM from E to E? What's what's the only thing in HOM from E to E for this uh, schema category? What am I not drawing? It's a what? The HOM from E to E contains what? What is it? The HOM from A to A always contains what? For any category, every object has a what? Okay, people must be really lost. Okay, um, identity. Yes, that's right. So, so the, all I'm thinking of it. The, I, I don't want to make this seem mysterious. All I'm doing is I'm plugging in E for this right now. I'm considering this one is Hom. Hom E comma E. In this category, what is Hom E comma E? It consists of a single thing, which is what? I the identity on E. Yeah, Thomas pointed out I, I kind of did this, but I just want to make it very clear where these things came from. I called it star, but here I'm gonna call it identity on E, right? There, there's a we we just don't don't draw it, but there's a thing here that's identity on E, right? Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm, I'm I shouldn't really write it. Or, or ah, uh, yeah, sure, sure, that's fine. I, I write it there. This is this is Hom E E. This one is going to be what? What is this one going to be? This one is going to be Hom. E comma V, right? This one right here, all right? This this set. What is in the HOM of E comma V? You, you're familiar with the notion of a HOM set. Between any two objects in this category, there's a HOM set. What is the HOM set between E and V? What is the set of morphisms between E and V? You should be able to read them out. Yeah, source and target. So 
I'm going to put here, I need a little bit more wiggle room, but source target. Hmm. That's going to be the representable for E. Okay. Um, and I can lift source and target is it i could i could put hom e comma source in here and hom e kind of target but um uh for the moment i'm i'm just going to going to leave it like that so we can try to finish up a little bit more here and we're going to have a similar representable okay so so this is a representable for e what does this look like as a graph what does this look like as a graph if i so 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 look any mapping from this to fin set is some graph what graph is this right that this any i think you'd agree the schema is the schema for graph is the schema for graph any mapping from this schema to fin set encodes a graph what graph is encoded by this functor, the representable for E. What's the graph look like? How many edges does it have? You tell me. How many edges does this have? This is a graph. I'm telling you, this is a graph, right? A graph is a mapping from this schema to, to FinSet. So what graph is this? If I draw at this graph, what would it look like? Right. Uh oh. So, so this is the schema category for a graph, right? If I map it to FinSet, if I have a functor that maps from the schema category to FinSet, that defines a graph, right? It seems like it would be two nodes. Okay. Okay. So, how many edges does this, let's go through it bit by bit. I really appreciate you you stepping up there, Thomas. Let's go through it bit by bit. How many edges does it have? To, to figure out how many edges, this is a graph, how many edges does it have? Well, it's the size of the set mapped to by E. What's the size of that set? How many edges does it have? Uh oh. I guess people are totally lost, hopelessly lost. Yeah, one. Yeah, so it has a single, single, it is a, it is a, a single edge. How many vertices does it have? Well, to figure out how many vertices it have, we look to the size of the set mapped to by V. How many vertices does it have? Two. This is the the representable for E can be described as a graph because it's a mapping from graph to set from the schema category to set to fin set. It 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 can be described as a graph. This is the graph. This is the basic building block of graphs. Okay, so let let's let's similarly do a representable. Or V. So this would be HOM. From E. Sorry. From. What do I put here? I just erased this. What should I put here? What am I putting? This is representable for E, so E went here. This is representable for V, so what goes here? V. Okay. This category is the same. It's, it's, it, it's, it, we're, we're going to be, so this is a functor. This is a functor. This is a functor. Functor from 
the schema category, which is graph, to finset. This is going to be a functor from this graph to finset, okay? So so it's going to be a, a functor. Yeah. Um, so Thomas says it seems like it is only the identity. Yeah. So 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 this is a, a functor, right? You, I mean, why is this a functor? Because you plug in any object here, right? And you get a set. And you plug in any morphism here. And you get a mapping between sets. So so it's a functor. Mm. Um, it's a functor to, to set. Okay. This is a functor. I plug in it. And so it's it's a functor from from this schema category. Yeah, yeah, Thomas has got it. Thomas has got it. Okay, great. Here we go. Okay, so it's a functor here from this to this. What does this map to? This maps to what? What does this map to? Somehow this has gotten really, really big arrows now. Okay. What does this map to? What does E map to now? So how many things are there from V to E? Hmm? So so we're figuring out what E maps to. We plug in E here, right? This is HOM V comma E, right? We're, all we're doing is we're putting E in. Because we're coming from E, we put E in here, in this little thing. So what's how many morphisms are there from V to E? Well, Thomas said it first. How many morphisms from V to E? There are none. It's the empty set. How many morphisms are there? Hom V V. How many morphisms are there from V to V? Hmm? I'm just, where did this come from? I'm just plugging this in for this, right? I'm just, it's just like that. This is a functor. It, you, you plug in each object. And and you consider the homs. Okay, <laughs> defining a, a functor based on the hom. That's the hom functor. Mm. Okay, we do this. And what is this going to be? Just identity, just like Thomas said, IDV. Okay. Okay. Um. And this is going to be, what are these functions going to be here? <laughs> what are these functions going to be? They're the vacuous functions, right? They're, they're like, they map from an empty set. They do nothing, right? They map from an empty set. So there's only one function from an empty set to, to that, okay? Okay, that's great. So there's actually only one of them. They both map onto the same 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 function. That, that's just the single function here. Okay, what graph is this? What so this encodes a graph. It's a mapping from graph to finset. So it describes some graph. What graph is it? Can anyone tell me? There's a dot. There's a dot. It's a dot. It's a dot. It's it's it's, it's it, this is a graph, right? I'm not drawing a category here. I'm drawing a I'm drawing a, a graph over here, right? This, these are graphs here. These are corresponding graph graphs. Okay. For representables. Representable. So each representable has like some graph. This is like the building blocks of graphs. There's two building blocks of graphs, vertices and edges. But to be complete, an edge can't be defined like in isolation of vertices. It has to be defined with its vertex, right? Like uh, with its, and so these are the two kind of natural building blocks, consistent building blocks. Okay, now I'm gonna just quickly and, and and I've got to go down to this meeting with Nostra on here, but I've just got to quickly 
Um, uh, I've got to quickly um, emphasize uh, representables five. Okay, I've got to quickly bring this back to this to this point. So look, when we have when we have a morphism from one object to another in a schema category. In a schema category. We have a morphism from set to one of these. So there's going to be something up here, and I'm going to ask you what it is to set to the other one. And what is what is this one and what is that one? It's tempting to think it's X, that this is X and this is Y. Is that right? What is it? Ah. Trying to drag up the. What is this? Is it set to the X to set to the Y, or is it set to the Y to the maps to set to the X? Does anyone know? I tell you, it's a beautiful thing, and it and it makes such sense in the world. What is it? Is it covariant or is it contravariant? Is this like that? Or is it like that? Does anyone know? Remember, this is a mapping from Y to set. Y to set. What which one is it? Well, I'm gonna tell you. If you want to tell me, I'm gonna tell you. Set to the Y to set to the X. It's contravariant. Why is it contravariant? Well, look, it's, it's actually, these things like make a world of sense once you think about them in the, in the right sort of way. Look, it's like, if you give me a set to the Y, I'm telling you I can get a set to the X. If you give me a mapping from Y to set, I'm telling you, I can give you a map. If you give me a mapping from Y to set and one of these, I can give you a mapping from X to set. How would I do that? I'm going to call this F and I'm going to call this W. How would I? If, if, if you give me a set to the Y, a mapping from Y to set, in other words, an AC set, Okay, fine. I could call this fin set. Um, if if you give me a set to the Y and you give me one of these, I tell you, I can give you this. How would I do it? Oop, sorry. Ah, ah, yes. Um, mm, mm. how would I do it? Well, look, if 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 the function, yes, yes, Thomas, I have a, a y to set. Well, okay, I have a I have a thing y to set. Let's call this w. This mapping y to set, and I have a mapping x to y. So what can I do? What is it just begging me to do? What is it just begging me to do? If I have a mapping from Y to set, yes, yes. So I have a mapping from Y to set, and I have a mapping from X to set. I'll just put them next to each other. So we'll go X to Y. 
and then we'll go y to set it's w it's equal i and this f then y and then w is the mapping from x to set uh huh uh -huh. so i'm telling you if if i have one of these but if i have a y ac set and i have a mapping from x to y I can get an X AC set. Okay. Mm. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, so look, if if I have a mapping from E to if if sort of V is a subpart, so I think of like vertices as like a subpart of an edge or like you know, like within an edge or something. Um, maybe this is not the right one. I think of I can get a, 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 from an E to the V here. I can then have a mapping from V's, uh, from AC sets, uh, from representables mm, for V uh, to representables uh, for E. Um, I, I actually have the re reverse. This is like if I have a mapping in the schema category like this, I get a mapping for AC sets like this which is um uh which is really nice um so i have a mapping from the representable for y so if i'm mapping from like e to v i have a mapping from the representable for v to the representable E. It's like I can have this mapping, or maybe I can have this mapping. Why are there two such mappings from this representable to that one? Why are there two mappings? Where did that two come from? Does anyone want to say? Where did that two come from? Why are there two such mappings here? Well, there's one for this one and one for that one, one for source, mapping to the source of that, and one for mapping to the target. Okay. So we're not going to have time to finish the story today but weekend is going to give us an opportunity to zoom in on a sub piece uh, and it's going to work with some similar logic here um you you may note here okay so if i have a mapping from this to xi and 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 that mapping is w and then i have a morphism from b to a i tell you from this, if I have this piece and I have some way of getting from B to A, so if, if I have this piece, which tells me from an A sub I, how I get X sub I, and I have this that says how to get from a B to an A, 
then I tell you, by putting the two together, just like, just in a similar way to what I did here, I have a way of getting from a B to an X. How would I get from a B to an X? What would I do? If I have this morphism, which tells me a mapping from A sub I into the current state, and I have this way of going from Bs to As, what can I do that will give me a way from having a B into the current state, this sort of sub piece into the current state, sub piece of A? How, how would I do that? What would I do? If I have this and I have this, what do I do? It's just the same trick we used here. What do I do? Compose the mapping. Compose them. So first I do this. So if, if I want something that will take Bs and give me a mapping of the current state, and I have something that takes As and gives me the current state, and something that takes Bs and gives As, all I have to do is put them in a row. I'll take a B, give an A, and then I'll take that A and map it to the current state, and get, get, that gives me a way of going from a B into the current state. And this, this, ladies and gentlemen, this mapping from B to A for AC sets results from having in the schema a mapping from A to B. Remember, it's contravariant when, we're, when we have in the schema. So this is like in schema. Uh, um, so I should put it in schema category. Right? That's what, that's what this is. If I have this, I have a mapping from AC sets in the reverse direction. So if I'm mapping the schema category from A to B, I get a mapping of AC sets from B to A, just in this sort of way. It just falls mechanically. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And if I have one of these guys, then I can do this trick by mapping from A from, a, from an AC set A into the current state, call it W, and I have this F, then I can get a mapping from B into the current state. Here, it's like B is, it's like a, it's, it's, it, I think of it as like a, a sub piece, like vertex is, it's like, I can get to it from this E. Given an E, I can I can get the B the V associated with it. So given an A, I can get the B associated with it. That leads to this AC set because of contravariance going from B to A. And that leads to me to be able to have a mapping from B to, to this thing here. So it's kind of like we can go from this to the things with which it's associated. Uh, uh, um, where am I? Uh, um, the bigger thing to the smaller thing, maybe. That's how Chris Brown, I guess, thinks about it. Bigger thing to the smaller thing, E to V. Get the V associated with that. Gift, that gives me a mapping of representables for B to A. From AC sets of B to A. And that gives me a way of turning. Now, if I have something that's a mapping, a homomorphism of AC sets from A to X, finding this pattern in X, this sheep in X, and I know how to go from a sheep to its grass or something, I can now have a mapping from its grass to the X. from a sheep in my in my thing here from a sheep I can get to its V then I get a mapping from representables of V to representables of sheep just like I had a mapping from this sort of the graph associated with this representable for V to the representable for E I, 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 I just get that for free because of this 
And then if I can do that, then I that's what gives me this. And then if I have a mapping from a sheep into, into the current state, I can get a mapping from the grass into the current state. Sheep is associated with grass. Because of that, I can go from representables of grass to representables of sheep. Kind of the building blocks, the natural building blocks of grass. It's an natural building blocks of sheep. It's a part of it. It's a part of that natural building block of sheep, the grass. Then if I map it from sheep to that, I, I get a mapping from the grass building block associated with it because every sheep has grass. And so I can I can map that into the current state. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Cool or not. Cool. Okay. Um, so I know a lot of your head may be spinning. I sort of went through that quickly, but it's, it's the same basic idea. Drawing diagrams really helps you. If you have an A to X and a B to A, then it follows you have a B to X, just followed by composition. And if you have in the schema category this to this, then you get this in the reverse direction just because it follows by the same sort of argument. And this allows you to feed in an AC set. Let's see, this is controversial, right? You can feed in an A, you can feed in the, the sheep and get out a an AC set for sheep and get out an AC set for graph, like for, for grass, like for, for the vertex. You can like zoom in, zoom in. You're just here having the more the homomorphism between these in, in the other direction. Just the representables are the other direction. But this allows you to kind of zoom in from the sheep to zoom in for the grass. And one thing you can always zoom in for. And this is gonna be, this is gonna hopefully bring it home. You can always zoom into one. And that's what we're doing here. That's what we're, ah, that's what we're doing with this weekend thing in this case. We're actually um, zooming in to one. Um, so we're, this is a mapping from one to S. And so we're gonna have S going in, uh -huh. one to S, that's what create is. It's mapping from one to S, the terminal, I'll build an S, terminal AC set to S. And so we're gonna have something that goes S going in and one going out. And that's gonna be, I think this is sort of a one thing. Um, the terminal thing, it, yeah, um, and, uh, and that's going to lead to this sort of thing. We turn into a one, we can always zoom into one. And then we have this one, this one, they're associated with sort of the unit. There's no information along there, no information here, no information here. And we can merge them because there's no information. And th so that's for wolf or sheep. So this is weakened in this special kind of case where we this is one and this is S because that's what create does, create, ah. create, create, um, Create some epic for what it has. Anyway, that that's all we have time for. Uh, hope that's not 
too confusing, but it allows us to merge the wires because they carry the same non-information, just one. Okay. Um, sometime we'll talk about strengthen. And strengthen, I think, allows you to, if I, if I understand it properly, kind of allows you to zoom out, zoom out and update Sort of, you can get a, I think, create the things around you, and um, and have that update the things around you, and uh, and have that update the state. But we'll talk about that some other time. My understanding of that is just being solidified. Hopefully that's useful. Hopefully that's helpful. Uh, thinking about this weekend can be used, it, it doesn't seem to be used often, but it can be used to kind of zoom in from sheep to vertex or from a house to the people in it or, or, or what have you. Okay, that's all we have time for. I need to talk to Nastaran uh, and uh, that will be all for today. Thank you everyone.